Number 47, the steam above a freshly made cup of instant coffee is really water vapor droplets condensing after evaporating from the hot coffee. What is the final temperature of 250 grams of hot coffee initially at 90 degrees Celsius if two grams evaporates from it? Assume it's in a styrofoam cup. All right. So here's the coffee, right? The initial temperature is 90 degrees Celsius, and basically the initial mass is 250 grams. And eventually, over time, the uh, a mass of two grams uh, will evaporate, and we can assume that this is basically water. All right. Now uh, we know that heat's basically going to be transferred right from the liquid coffee into the steam particles. Right. So the coffee should be losing heat over time, and the uh, that heat is then going to uh, evaporate uh, the uh, water. Okay. That's where it's traveling. Essentially, I mean, you, you know it's not traveling, and that's where it's being transferred. Um, okay, so we can kind of create a formula, right, that we can think of something like this, that the heat initially present in this uh, container of coffee minus then the heat that was needed to evaporate this amount of steam should be equal to the heat that is finally um, in that amount of coffee, right? That should make, I think, some intuitive sense. Now, if I just reorganize this a little bit, right, I can basically uh, bring this term on over to the uh, right-hand side, and we can have something like this, that negative QE should be equal to then uh, the final value, right, minus then, oop, one second, the final Q minus the initial Q, okay? And basically, uh, this is saying that this difference will be some negative value, and that should make sense, right? Because this change here in heat energy for the coffee, that is, right? This is all for the coffee, uh, the liquid coffee, uh, should be a negative value. It should be losing heat over time, all right? Now, basically, what we can do is we can realize that this term is essentially a change term, right? Now, I'm going to make one assumption here. I know the initial mass is about 250, and then the final mass is going to be about 248, right, because this coffee is losing two grams of mass. However, though, and we can do that calculation and whatnot, but the problem actually becomes a lot harder because I can't just simply substitute in, you know, the final mass here and then the initial mass and expand on these as MC delta or MCT. And this is the final temperature and this is the final mass. It's a little more nuanced than that because basically I'd have to find the total amount of heat energy finally, which would be essentially uh, the difference or would be uh, would consist of if you had to think of our continuum and just think about how to explain the solid liquid and gas the total amount of heat energy inherent let's say in a 90 gram or 90 degrees celsius cup of water would be found or a cup of coffee would be found by finding the total amount of energy here going from zero all the way to 90 but then i guess well wait a minute but then I guess now I'm just thinking, but I guess the only difference between the initial state and the final state is going to be the mass. And let's say the cup of coffee reduces, which it will, it reduces its temperature. And then we would have to find this whole thing. But yeah, the, yeah, yeah, it is a little more nuanced because then I'd have to find, uh, assuming the final mass is different now, then I'd have to find the total amount of heat energy it takes to get from basically no heat energy all the way up to the melting point and then find that for the different mass. So it does become a lot more complicated. Um, so don't worry if you didn't really understand that discussion. I'm just trying to, I'm actually just explaining it to myself as I'm going. So um, in any case, it is more complicated. I thought it was initially, and then I started drawing the sound. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it might not be. And then I realized, no, I was right the first time. So let's just assume that the uh, change here in Q is for a constant mass, all right? And we'll assume that the constant mass is the final, not the initial value, but the final value. We're going to be off by ever so slightly. If we were to really calculate the exact answer, we'd be off ever so slightly here with our numbers. But I don't think it's really, you know, precision, you know, extreme precision in these problems, as well as in life in general, isn't really a good thing. It, depending upon what you're doing, obviously. Um, but just, you know, this will be really close enough. So we should be fine here. So if you notice, this is delta Q. Now you might say, well, I've never seen delta Q before. Well, you have. You just really haven't realized that delta Q is equal to MC delta T. Whatever change in temperature occurs for an object 
correlates with the change in heat energy, right? That was transferred or basically absorbed or gained, right? Absorbed or lost, whatever, depending upon the direction. So essentially, I can now plug in MC delta T for delta Q. And the, again, the fine, this mass has to be constant here. So this is going to be now, and I'll expand on this. This is going, and actually, you know what? I'll expand on this right here. So this is negative. The heat of evaporation is equal to the mass that evaporated multiplied by the, by the latent heat of vaporization. So we basically are going to realize here that we can come up with an answer. Let's just solve for delta T for now, divide out MC from both sides. Okay, now remember, these masses are not the same. This is the mass of the liquid. And this is the mass that has evaporated. So that you got to be, they both look like E's now. So this is the liquid and this is the uh, one that has evaporated. So they are not the same. You got to be very careful. So now we have our formula delta T will be equal to negative the mass that evaporated times latent heat of vaporization divided then by the mass that of the liquid remaining we're going to assume and then multiplied by the um, specific heat of that liquid. All right, so delta T now we can just plug in the values. So this is going to be, let me give myself a little more space. So this is now going to be uh, negative, uh, put, converted into kilograms, right? It was two grams that evaporated, so kilograms 0 0.002. Latent heat of vaporization of water. You gotta convert that into joules, so just multiply that by 1,000, all right? Add three zeros, and then divide that now by the mass that was remaining, so 248, but you gotta divide that by 1,000 again, right? And then multiplied by that uh, specific heat of water at that liquid state, which is about 4184-ish. And let's calculate. So this is going to be uh, negative, point zero zero, oops, negative point zero zero two times then 2256000 divided now by 0 0.248 times 4184. And what do we get? So we get a temperature difference now of about negative 4.3 four, eight-ish, blah, 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 right? This is in degrees Celsius. So this should make sense, though the temperature has dropped. So we have to find the final temperature, though. Well, if it started at 90, right, and it dropped by this amount, how much is left? You know, what's the final? Just take 90 and then add to that answer. So this is basically the final temperature here will be equal to 85.7 or so, 80. So 85.7 degrees Celsius. That would be the approximate final temperature. You could do it the other way, but it's going to be a lot longer, and uh, you'll notice that the change is going to be, you know, a fraction of a degree or even maybe a degree somewhere around there. Just not worth it. All right, guys. So thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.